that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> that is drama right there. Take two. Welcome to the studio. Look at this. I'm sitting down to do this video today. <laughs> For no particular reason other than we're working a little small. I got to thinking I always work big and those of you that follow us know I work really large. I like large pieces of artwork. I like to have all that room to work on the narrative. But I have many sketchbooks and watercolor paper books that I work in. Oh, here's one of my best pieces here. That's from our son. So he likes to paint with me, but then, you know, when we're traveling, I, I carry these with me or I work out different techniques as well. But I know a lot of you work smaller, so I wanted to try and do a little demonstration using Echoline liquid watercolors today. That's a beautiful apple green. That's a lot of fun. And then their Echoline brush pens. Now, they have, did you know, Kristen, they have the dual tips now? Really? Yeah, so they got the two different size tips oh, on either nice. side. Just like came that. out. I just have the regular ones, but they're still phenomenal. And you have, I, I mean, hundreds of colors between the two of these. I like them because they're portable, uh, they don't create a giant mess when you're traveling, and, and they're very bright and fun. So let's just start doing something. Let's first do some outlines using our Brunzel pencil. Just like a lot of people do outlines before they do their actual watercolor, we're doing that. Some people go lighter, I like to actually go darker because I like seeing big lines that are bold. Of course, there's a fly already in the studio. <laughs> Remember, Kristen, you have to actually talk to me. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> I will talk. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, this is why people like us, not because of me, but because of you. You're biased. We had a kid together. <laughs> it's, and seriously though, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things that I enjoy about doing these videos. Otherwise, I would not do them. Well, that's not true. You were doing them for a while. I was. When you first started. Yeah, well, out of necessity. I mean, you can't, you can't do it. You can't, you, you have to make the videos now. Well, and then I... I... I got jealous of all the time he was spending alone with the camera, so I decided to make myself indispensable to the camera. <laughs> now I get all my me time. Uh, you are indispensable to me. So, so what kind of a pencil are you using right now? Okay, so this is the Brunzel. Well, this is one of my favorites. It's a 5B. And I'm just outlining some things, and you can cut some of this out or not. But I like our banter. I think it's hilariously fun. Alright, so we outlined some stuff. Now, I'm going to take, and you can see I sort of did this already, so um, I didn't, I stole this from Royal Talents, they had a little blip on using these. <laughs> but they just took their, their brush, pen? brush pen and dipped the tip of it in there, and then they did uh, some technique. You get real close in on that. Yeah. That's why I said we're going to be close in, so you might as well just stay close in. And it creates a gradient as you go. They were showing it for lettering. Um, I don't do a lot of calligraphy lettering, so it wasn't really a, a technique that I wanted. And you can see eventually it does start to come off. You can rinse it, wipe it off, and your color comes back. So this isn't going to damage your marker in any way? No, that's exactly right. See, that's why you're here, because <laughs> you can always pose those questions. Is it wrecking it? No. You can see it's already starting to clear off. You can wash it in some water and then uh, it's all cleaned off already. Get a little blotter pad and now you've got a pure yellow again to work with. It might take a few strokes to get the, the water out, but eventually you're back to a really nice yellow, vibrant yellow. You can see how quickly we can do that. So you can also take and take a little water and take that same, take a little water I said, and now you can use that yellow and blend it out with normal watercolor techniques. Just like that. So are these going to be fixative like a watercolor then? Yeah, it's the same thing. It has all the same characteristics of, of uh, normal watercolor. 
And I, I like the, like I said, I like the fact that it's very portable and it's very much like a marker situation. You can take and then pour a little, they have handy little eyedroppers. I tend to pour them right into little containers to use. It doesn't take much to do that. And now I'm going to take a little scotch. Just a scotch. And I'm going to actually wet down my big old flat wash from Princeton. I'm going to actually take and do a simple line down with that color. Get a little more this time. I'm going to go this way. You can see it crossing the yellow and creating a really beautiful green. Yeah, that's a lovely green. Just a little bit more down here. I'm going to do a wash in here basically. And that's just, it's still, it's still very, very blue, right? So yeah, we can, we can it's take, gorgeous. And that's very thinned out there. And if you don't, if it's too thin, then you can blot it out, create some techniques or some, look at that texture that you can get just using a paper towel. Lovely technique. I didn't put my gloves on. It is, it will tend to stain your fingers a little bit. So I do still like to wear my gloves. So excited to start! I forgot to put on. <laughs> I just realized that instead of saying my tiptoes back here, I can use this. You can use that step stool. So here's here's the. Um, That's better. This is the turquoise. Actually, I'm gonna do it a little bit with something else. Let's do it with the black. So this is the black one, and again, I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do because I don't want to actually damage my white contaminate too much is so I'm going to pour a little bit in there. I'm going to tip just the tip of the black in that white and then I can do some interesting techniques again of a gradient. Let's do it over here. Oh it wouldn't be Saturday without the lawnmower next door. That. Or is that the weed trimmer? That, no. Chainsaw unfortunately. Oh. Just perfect for <laughs> Our neighbors don't know we're a sound stage in here. So now I've made a nice little gradient of the gray. Yeah, we'll go ahead and shut that window now. Yeah, that might help. And that creates a really nice gradient again. Now I can I could take my brush as well, or even a sponge brush works. Pick that white up. Now look at let's block this in a little bit with that white. You can't really tell, but you will in a second. And it can blend nicely as well. Let's take that right over this blue. So that's that white. And it's very opaque. Look at that. This is very wet. So if, if you actually built layers up and you use the Degas fixative between the layers, you could actually start to get a lot, a lot more opacity using this, the, the Echoline white on it. Um, and that's, to me, that's really fascinating to be able to use watercolor that has this opacity that isn't um, uh, gouache. Okay. So there's a little couple more little quick techniques there. You can wash that really pretty little blue around. Like that. And now let's put um, what other color we have? We have a really beautiful green. Let's try this green out on something. We can put it directly on there too, and we can get it a little bit wet, and that's going to spread. That do some really neat techniques. Check that out. Now we're using an eyedropper. Just putting some of the green in a few locations. Pretty green. Pretty green! Might have to shut the back window too. <laughs> Chainsaw. Alright, check The sound out. of suburbia. Look at how that is filling in the... Oh, 
those beautiful colors. And it's mixable. These are water mixable. I mean, you can mix the colors is what I'm trying to say. See that? That's the green with the blue. Creating like a turquoise. Pretty pretty. Oh well. I know. <laughs> but that's what, you know, that's, honestly I've said this before, I think that's kind of the appeal of our <laughs> show. Oh. oh boy. It sounds like it's, uh, oh maybe. Okay. Well, I have always felt like Wilson, so this is, this is perfect. You get to be Tim the Toolman Taylor. <laughs> Who's right. Ale? We don't have an Ale. No, no, no. No, we don't have a straight man foil, really. All right, so now I'm gonna take this black and do this right here. You know, you, you can use normal watercolor techniques um, because I tend to be contemporary. I don't do a lot of the shading that others do. Um, I don't have good control over my watercolors because of that. Because I tend to like to really do um, vibrant, hard edged, or very biomorphic designs. One of the things about watercolor in general is the fact that you can lift it. So I'm going to show you a uh, technique of lifting it here real quick. Even though I just got that all wet. Let's take over here. This is a unicorn kitty. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, there it is, unicorn kitty. <laughs> okay, so now I have that there. I have a handy little baby wipes and I can actually lift some of that color off. Welcome to Cloud Cuckoo Land. Sorry, unicorn kitty. <laughs> now it might be better if I do do this with, um, there's other ways of doing this, but this will work just fine to give us a little bit of a different. This is why you want to use a really heavy paper though too. Okay. So what kind of paper is your favorite for this? Well, this is a, this is a 140 pound uh, hot press paper. It's not a lot of texture in it. And I like that fact that there's not a lot of texture. But other people prefer the highly textured work or paper rather work. outlining it again. I lifted that pattern. The only thing we could do is we could put this down. If it's a little bit drier, it's not really that dry. But I'm going to go ahead and block some of this back out. That fly is very persistent. Isn't yeah, it's it? been in here for a few hours. Living its best little art gallery fly life. My least favorite color. Yeah. I don't even like to wear it. <laughs> so using some stencils, we can create, if I can get it back off of there. <laughs> <laughs> Not the gumdrop button. Some, some different patterns. If you still have some on there, you can do it and flip it and you can also then use it almost like a stamp. That's pretty cool. Oh, Quite now it's the sound of a dirt bike. Motorcycles. The other thing we can do is we got a little tiny sponge here. Is you can do little polka dots. Delicate little dots. Let's just 
try the pink just because. That's all pretty wet, so I'm going to draw picked up a lot of that orange. I'm going to work it over the other orange and create another really, really beautiful color. Watch what happens here. I'll let that do its thing. Spread around. We can work some pastels into this as well. Because I am a mixed media artist. I was a sculptor before, and I also worked in graphic design, so I think that that helped, you know, working from, I worked 10 years as a graphic designer, professionally, and I was in, actually in school for graphic design, right? Yeah. So, that, my senior year, I switched, because I, what I was doing wasn't accepted yet in the industry. It was handmade paper books as presentation methods. I hadn't perfected it, and maybe that's probably why they didn't let me through. But at that point I was like, well, I need to re-examine what I'm doing. And so I took woodworking, ceramics, drawing, painting, like everything. I took a semester and I took all of it. And I'm sure my parents were really, really angry. <laughs> and, and so, in, in any case, um, the part that drew me the most, mostly because of the instructor, now this is a good reason to get a very heavy paper because my, as I'm aggressive to this, it's peeling the paper out. Uh, and because I'm, I'm very aggressive when I arr, do the arr, arr check. Um, <laughs> so and the paper is very wet. So when it's really wet, it doesn't like what I'm doing. It's peeling it out. Ceramics drew me without a doubt, which is funny because now you know I'm, I'm doing it so much that it's. Um, Clearly painting this drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Taylor chalk. I don't remember what brand it is. So what, what is a Taylor chalk? Taylor's chalk? I don't know. So Taylors you, use it to mark out their... So you'd you know, probably find it in like the sundry section of the fabric store? Uh, yeah, you can also buy it from any of your major... I don't have any of this on. Maybe we should put this on our... On our um, website, but I don't have any right now on there. I like working it into the wet, again, because it, it's, it just becomes so, so uh, beautifully luscious. And it's a way to blend, just to really get some neat, neat blending. It's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very amenable to blending. And that's one of the reasons that it's so nice to use. So this is right over the watercolor. It's starting to dry a little bit, so I'm able to do a little bit more with it. Now we can get a little more crazy. <laughs> So now I'm going to just put some red, and it does—it looks almost black right there, right? And I'm going to use my palette knife. Actually, I have, I have a big one right here. Let's just use this one. This is from an earlier demo. Now that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> That is drama right there. So typically you would look at watercolor as being thin and, and, and ethereal, but I kind of wanted to present it in a different way, that you can build it up pretty thick. Uh, you can get a lot of layers, particularly if you have a watercolor that has the ability, the pigment in it, um, 
pigment load and the purity of pigment that mixing them doesn't go like brown icky colors. And that's what I like about these for the price that you're paying for them, which I think is pretty reasonable. You get some really excellent things to play with. Uh, I'm sure I'll go back into this uh, being a mixed media artist. <laughs> I will do all kinds of stuff to it. And in fact, here's a chalk right here. I can kind of work into it a little bit more with this big chunk of chalk. And I can start to really define hard line, define things. And I can blend it with my finger right into there. But get the heaviest board that you can if you're going to work like this um, because it will it will absolutely uh, break down if you're using thinner watercolor paper. Okay? So, I think that gives us an idea on what you can do with this really cool stuff from Equiline. Which we sell on our hands, website. Of course. And also, here's the liquid watercolors. They're really great. There's a lot of techniques that we haven't even addressed yet, and I think they're really good. Let's just do one more thing. Let's do one more thing, shall we? <laughs> so that is simply that white watercolor pour it in there and then a little bit of water again now it's spreading out going on its Ooh, journey that is a puddle of pigment right there that is a puddle of pigment now i can work that around or i can add another piece you can actually because of the way the nature of this thing is you can use similar techniques that you might with other kinds of inks acrylic and otherwise So that's another thing I like. That's going to react with that white. It's going to create some little white edges around it, uh, and it'll continue to blend with the piece. And again, this is a demo piece. It's not really a finished work. But you can get an idea of some alternative ways of working with your watercolors. So I think that's about it for today. Thanks for joining me and Kristen in the studio today, recording in a couple places. And check us out online, davidaustingallery.com. This was a fun little sitting down demonstration for a change instead of standing up action painting. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Create without fear. Bye-bye.